Hey, hello my friends, Rick Billings here. Hey, I, you can see in the title there, I'm running a few errands here, but you can see in the title there, I put, you know, uh, who wants to be a millionaire? I mean an entrepreneur. And, um, you know, I titled it that because the fact is, is that, you know, 97% of the people that get involved as a home business entrepreneur, um, they, they don't they don't make it you know and and I want to talk a little bit about you know some of those things that um, prohibits them from you know becoming successful in uh, any type of business that you own for yourself I mean this is true in you know bricks and mortar business as well as a home uh, having a home business and um, you know a lot of it you know evolves around your experience level and what you're willing to do to advance your personal development okay when I started my photo you know just to kind of share with you a little bit when I started my photography business uh, back in 1985 in Omaha Nebraska I actually bought a I bought a studio um, hi Giovanni hey I bought a studio uh, from a photographer and um, you know it was doing you know a base of business and I started to grow up from there but when you know when things happen when you know adversity hits you you've got to dig down and dig deeper okay you know I was uh, started to build my business and three years into my business I get a knock at the door from the state of Nebraska now we had a home studio we had a home photography business and I get a, a knock at the door from the state of Nebraska and they said you know I said can I help you and you know come on in and they said well you know we want to buy your home you know we're putting an access road out here and we need to acquire your property and the property next door to you and I says well it's not for sale I have a photography business here I'm not I don't want to sell it and they said well I'm sorry but if you don't want to sell it we'll just have to condemn it and I said well what does that mean well we'll make you an offer and and you know we'll acquire your property from you and I said you gotta be kidding me and boy that made me mad that really made me mad and you know it's something as an entrepreneur things like this come up in your face and that was a pretty big deal I had spent two hundred and sixty seven thousand dollars on this home studio now to tell you a little bit about that two hundred sixty seven thousand dollars I had no money I had zero money I went to eight banks and finally the eighth banker said Rick I think you can do this I really do I think you can do this so I'm gonna take a chance and I'm gonna give you a first mortgage on the house and a commercial loan instead of a home loan I'm gonna give you a first uh, a first mortgage on the business and then the owner that I bought it from took a second back on the house and a second back on the business I'm gonna shut my sunroof here so I can uh, you know not have so bright right here and so he took a second uh, back and I had four mortgages and I'm starting to build and then three years into it I get the knock at the door from this uh, state of Nebraska. I said well, it's not for sale. They said well, we'll just go through condemnation to acquire your property. I says oh boy I was so mad. I was telling everybody I told everybody about you know what the state of Nebraska was gonna do They're gonna take my property from me and I come across an attorney that fought the state of Nebraska you know, Marty Cannon, I'll never forget it. He was an elderly gentleman, Marty Cannon, and his daughter was getting married. He said, I tell you what, if you take and do my daughter's wedding, I'll just trade you and I'll do your case for you, okay? I says, oh my goodness, that's fantastic. And so we, we, we waited and waited, and he said, just don't get in no hurry. Let's just sit around. He says, call the state and tell them that you hired Marty Cannon. So I called him, and I said, you know, I hired Marty Cannon as my attorney, and they said, oh, shh. <laughs> you know, because he fought the state of Nebraska and won all the time. And uh, to make a long story short, you know, we, um, I went through a whole process and Marty pushed me to say, you know, uh, let's do this, let's hold out. And, and, you know, I had the idea I wanted to acquire this piece of property back and build and have it rezone commercial and build me a brand new studio. And so, um, yeah, I told Marty Cannon, and he goes, okay, let's, let's do this. So we made a deal. I mean, the, the, just to tell you what happened is the state went downtown, look what I paid for the house. Didn't know what I paid for the studio, but they'd seen what I paid for the business, I mean the home, and they offered me 25000 less than I paid for it. So it got kind of ugly, and I held out, and I told them I want the land back for what they were offering me less. 
and um, they, you know, and they didn't care what I did with it. I just wanted this odd shaped piece of land back. We had uh, about an acre of land there, and I was going to rezone a commercial, and so that's what I did. I, I told my, you know, we settled, and they gave me the leftover piece of land back. I went downtown to the, to the city of Omaha, and I had a rezone commercial, and the price went up four times in value. The property shot up to 150000 uh, uh, for the acre of land. It was across from Boys Town in Omaha, Nebraska. And uh, that was my down payment, and I borrowed um, $375,000, and I built an 8,000-square-foot home studio. Uh, brand new studio, 50 feet behind my existing studio. And um, and so with that same banker that had loaned me the money on the first one and uh, had a great relationship with him, he trusted me, he made me do my P&L statement every single month. And I thank him dearly for that. For 25 years, 20 plus years, I did a profit and loss statement because that was my roadmap. I knew my numbers. And I challenge you still today, if you're an entrepreneur, you've got to know your numbers track your numbers write your numbers down it is so important to know how many customers you're getting how many reps you're getting how much volume you're getting depending on what kind of business you're in and track that weekly to see your progress okay key very key just like you should track your you, you know your outgoing marketing efforts okay so anyway get back to my story so I had a rezone commercial and we built this studio and everybody's wondering who's building this big big home studio you know it's 8,000 square foot brick building behind this other building <laughs> and I I took and uh, uh, and then you know one weekend they ripped down our old studio we moved into our new studio they ripped down our old home okay and we're in this other home and then it dawned on me and I put all signs up and you know it's about marketing it's about what you're doing you got to share with others and, and you know I was pretty good at marketing I did a lot of marketing I've been doing marketing for 30 years now and uh, since 1985 so that's been 32 years I guess and um, so we had moved into this new studio and my competitors said you'll never make it you'll never make it that, you know, somebody called my bank because I had a thing financed by Omaha State Bank, and they called Mike, which is my the president of the bank, and says, you know, Billings is never going to make it. You know, he can't take on this this you know and build you know this much of a overhead and stuff like that. And all I said is, watch me, watch me. How can anybody ever control what you can do? Nobody can. There's only one little guy sitting on your shoulder, but if you brush that person off and you have a positive mind and you fill your, your mind with personal development, you can do anything in life you want to do. If you have a vision, if you have goals, you're driving in traffic here, so I'm kind of being careful here, okay? And so if you have a vision, you have goals, what you want to achieve, you can do that. Don't let anybody ever tell you you can't do it. I don't care how hard it gets. Because as my story continues, I became the first digital photographer in the country in 1995. You know, people thought I was crazy. Again, I had a vision. You know, I photographed a lady one time, and uh, she asked me if I'd come over on Christmas Day and photograph her family. It was a last-minute deal. They had a family member show up and surprise them, and, and it was, they were all there and had had a family picture in a long time. And she was a realtor. She was a good client of mine. And I said, you know, absolutely I'll be there. Absolutely. I mean, I was just that way. I was all in, okay? So I went over there, and, you know, two hours out of my day, I could do that, okay? You know, my children were little and, and so on, so and April didn't mind my wife. And so I ran over and did, um, you know, uh, the Browns portrait, okay? And, and when I got done, she went in her office, her home office there, and she was a realtor, but she had a home office, and she got a book, and she wrote in this book. She said, you're a true rhino. Thank you very much. And she gave me this book called Rhinoceros Success. And I tell you what, that really, back then, that was in 19, probably 80, I was in an old studio, no, I was in a new studio, 89, well, no, about 1990, let's say, okay? It's been a while back. And I got this book called Rhinoceros Success by Scott Alexander, and I highly recommend it. He's had several versions of it now, and and he's had Dave Ramsey, and many people write, you know, the cover of a new one. Get it on Amazon, short little read, but it talks about rhinos and cows, and how rhinos have skin two inches thick, they weigh 6,000 pounds, they keep plowing forward, they don't let nothing get in their way, they keep going forward, they're not terrible, but they just don't let, when people try to knock them down, they can't. 
they can barrel through a forest and knock trees down and, and stuff like that, but they have skin thick. And when people say things, when people do things, they don't worry about it. It doesn't affect them at all. And that's what way I take life is things that don't affect me. I mean, professionals don't get personally attached to the outcome of things that happen in their business. They just go on to other things, especially when you're recruiting people, okay? You know, how can, why would you ever, when somebody tells you no, they're not saying no to you, they're saying no to themselves. Remember that, they're saying no to themselves. They can't, you know, it's not you, it's not your vehicle, your business, you know, as you become an entrepreneur, okay? And so she gave me this book, and, and I read this book, and he's got two other um, Rena, advanced Renas, Renas, or whatever, he's got two other books which are really great. But I tell you what, you know, it's a great read. And you know, if you're, you know, you want to be inspired, you know, read this book by Scott Alexander that he wrote, he wrote 25 plus years ago. Anyway, I was building my studio and and things were happening, and I, I started a digital training center as the first digital photographer. So I'm going to train people around the world how to transition your portrait studio to digital. Kodak had me lecturing all over the country. I did that for 11 years. They flew me around and lectured to big pho photographic organizations, and I started a training center that held about 18 people and in my downtime in my studio uh, I plan these training uh, events once a month and I had people from all around the world that would fly in from Australia from New Zealand from the UK that would fly in and train and this is back in 1997 okay I mean we're talking 20 years ago my camera cost $30,000 that I bought people thought I was crazy I was one of the first digital photographers in the entire world at that time Okay, writing articles for magazines and a company out of Pittsburgh called me and they said, hey, we want you to come in and, uh, you know, we want to we want to come see you. And I said, no, you don't, you know, you can come to my training center because everybody called me wanted to come see what I was doing. I said, no, I got a Get Digital Training Center called it GetDigital.com and I got this Get Digital Training Center. You can come to a week course. I teach a week class on how to transition your photography studio digital. Bought a bunch of equipment, desk everything and upgraded our IT and it was pretty first class and it was in a nice room in our in our studio and people came and so this this company out of Pittsburgh says you don't understand we're a publicly traded company we do uh, photography and we're starting to do photography on cruise ships and we're not our business model is not doing that well we want to come see what you're doing so I said okay you can come in I'm lecturing I'm flying out to Springfield Mass on December 28th so they come in on the 24th uh, four, th uh, 20, oh, let's see, they came on the 26th, I think I was flying on the 29th, they came in on the oh, day after Christmas, they came, they flew in, okay, and came in to see my studio, within three hours, they said, I want to, we want to buy you out, how much you want for your studio, I said, a million and a half bucks, they said, we want to buy you, okay, I had a manual, 400 pages that ran my operation, see, previous that I didn't tell you, is seven years prior to that happening, I got up every morning at four o'clock, and I wrote a manual because I had a goal to develop a business that could continue without me. And in the photography business, that was challenging. I had 27 employees. Okay, we were doing about a million, about a million, you know, two million four in business. Okay, but I had a business. I had a goal to develop a business that continue without me. And the only way I felt I could do that is take what I knew here and put it on paper. Okay. And so I developed a manual, and, and it was a pretty sophisticated manual and uh, to develop a business. And they seen the value in that. And as they seen the value in that, they took and, and, uh, and wanted to buy me out. They said, fly up to Pittsburgh. And so I, on my way back from Springfield, Mass., I stopped in Pittsburgh for three days. And uh, it, was a, it was an exciting time for me. I mean, here's a publicly traded company that wants to acquire me, okay? And, uh, you know, the... The president is the one that came in with his vice president. We went back there, we met the CEO, and um, the CEO was on board, but he wanted to give me more stock than I got in cash. And I said, no, he wanted to give me 80% stock, 20% cash. I said, no, I want 80% cash, 20% stock. I didn't know enough about them to know that that would be a good deal for me, okay? So I didn't want to take that, and I had I was adv getting advice through my banker, okay? So anyway, he... Um, I'm kind of going taking the story all the way through, but a lot of people have asked me, hey, what's your whole story? And I just wanted to share it. So uh, I come back to, to Omaha, and uh, we didn't have a deal done, and the, um, the president of that company 
calls me, and I didn't hear from him in two days. He calls me two days later and says, Rick, I resigned as president from that company. I want to merge your, our businesses together, our photo wave. It was called photo wave at the time where they're doing interactive pictures on cruise ships. I want to, I want to merge photo wave with you. And um, I got an investor in a publicly traded company. He wants to jump in and let's all three go in together and start, you know, acquiring studios around the country and converting them digital. So I thought about it a little bit because we had talked about that business model and um, I took a chance. I took a chance. I went all in. I put the million and a half dollars that, you know, my studio was worth and some more. Uh, he put a million and a half in and our investor put two million in over a period of several years. And we had five million into this venture and we're trucking along and we start buying studios. And then we hit on a sports photography model that, that Kodak, it appealed to Kodak. It was much better where we could shoot action pictures and team pictures, put them online. So we started to, we shifted over from buying studios. We had nine of them at the time into a business model called ASPN.com, American Sports Photo Network. And uh, we bought this um, we start uh, getting, you know, kind of distributors, uh, shooters, like almost like a franchise model all around the country shooting sports photography. And uh, we had some good momentum going and, and then 2001 hit. And if anybody remembers 2001, if you had a dot com behind your name and we were really heavily promoting at that time, 80% ASPN.com. And when you had a dot com behind your name, we tanked. The dot coms, all the investors pulled back. We, we had visited a, a vested group that wanted to give us $50 million in New York City. And they all had three had to agree and two of the three agreed. The third one said, we just don't think you have your full management team in place. They didn't give us the $50 million. About eight months later, the dot-com boom hit. Our investor in New York, he just kind of said, I'm not going to put any more money in. I'll just, you know, I'm cheering you on. And we lost momentum. We lost momentum and we just couldn't sustain two executive salaries. We did so many things. We did a few cutbacks and stuff like that, but we were five years ahead of time. You know, we were five years ahead of the game and uh, it was tough, but we were breaking grounds. And I can tell you today from 19, uh, let's see, 1998, here it is 2017, 20 years later almost. And I can tell you that our graphics that we created, 900 graphics that we created for the sports photography industry are the finest things today, still 20 years later, because they were real graphics, they weren't clip art. And um, had a great graphic design, a guy that's uh, known for years, Jeff Snyder, he, he did some amazing stuff for us. But anyway, getting back to that, we lost momentum. We decided to relocate our business to Orlando, Florida, you know, and um, you know, the business really couldn't afford two executive salaries. And you know, we were pulling down 150 K a year and or so and you know was doing several a couple you know several million dollars of the business about two and a half million dollars of business at the time but we were burning through a lot of that because when you go into the growth part the startup growth stage you burn a lot of capital when you get in you know into the momentum stage is when you start to make a lot of money okay and that's kind of the business I'm in now that's kind of where they're at there they, they just shifted into the momentum stage from a startup stage and so anyway we couldn't recover moved to Orlando we worked the business quite a bit and I told my partner I said you keep running it okay because we had a lot into it I had everything into it because I'm an all-in person we relocated our family here and I says I'll go out and do photography again uh, you know, I'm a, ma I'm a master photographer, craftsman photographer. I've been that for 20 years. I know how to make photographs, not take photographs. And so I started doing photography again. I catered a concierge service to the very, very wealthy. I catered to the millionaires here in Orlando. You know, the, the athletes, the sports, the people that are on, playing for magic and that live in two and three million dollar homes. And I delivered everything and I framed everything. I hung the portraits, I did everything. And they never asked the price. Most of them never asked the price. And I built up a pretty nice business, okay? But I kept I kept really looking for something that I could regain my wealth because in Omaha I had 27 employees. I mean, I had a tremendous amount of money. You know, I had sold my studio, the building I had there, and we sold it, you know, for a big number. And now it's amazing because the studio is a production facility and beautiful, beautiful location for a high-end jewelry store. And uh, in Omaha, and so, 
you know, those things happen in the studio in Omaha, still in existence. The guy moved it into a, another location. He, we sold the studio. They, they took Billings Photography, moved it to another location. His wife had some health issues, and so they moved it back into their home. And so the studio is still in existence in Omaha today, Billings Photography. That started in 1985, 32 years later. And um, so anyway, getting back to my story here, okay, I, I was searching and searching for a way to regain my wealth. How am I going to build up another million dollar business that I can take and 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 have a great retirement and 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 help and I knew it involved helping people and stuff like that and I knew res, I knew of residual income but I don't know I'll be honest with you I totally didn't understand that residual income back 12 14 15 years ago now I was building photography I was networking I was going to meetup groups I was going to B and I I was promoting my photography and so on and I met a lady in my B&I group and she had me do some photography for her. Pretty savvy lady, pretty smart lady and she had me do her portraits of her grandkids. And uh, she said, you know, I'd really like to explain my business to you and you know, it, you can produce leveraged residual income. And I said, tell me about this residual income. And she told me more and I had been studying it along the way and Robert Kiyosaki talks about residual income. A lot of great people talked about residual income. And so, um, I took and, and uh, she had me do her portraits and I took them to her house and delivered them and, and you know she spent like thirteen fourteen hundred dollars on these portraits and um, she said you know that business I was talking about I think you'd be great in this business and you know it's a home business and, and you can do it alongside with your photography and you know you meet a lot of people and it's about helping other people it's about maintaining good health and, and so on. And, she says, you know, I can just write your check for the photography you've done, or I can just put you in my business with this, with our biggest pack that we have, and you're going to get this, this, and this, and you know, we'll be business partners, and I'll help you and train you and teach you. And I said, I'm in. Sign me up. I'm in. I'm an entrepreneur. I'm looking for multiple streams of income. I'm looking for something that I wouldn't have to work as hard as I worked in the photography industry. That is linear income. When I stop doing work, portraits, when I stop doing weddings, when I stop photographing people, I stop earning. I want residual that I can do the efforts one time and continue to get paid over and over and over, okay? And that's what I wanted. And I found it. I found it. And that was in 2006. So that's uh, 11, 12 years ago, okay? 11 years ago, I guess. And, you know, I, you know, I, I have an extensive marketing background. I have done so much marketing, so many things you can't believe. I got a photography background, a graphics background, uh, an internet background, you know? I can do the Photoshop and the videos. I owned a video production company for eight years inside our photography business. So I did so many different things and I just started applying those things to my current business that I had. And I tapped into the resources that we had, which is key. I tried not to invent the wheel, but I knew some things that they weren't doing that would help us. So I applied those things. I made marketing materials to share what we were doing. And, you know, so, I got to end this because there's I could just keep going on and on I guess but I, I want to end this with getting back to you know the failure rate in in home businesses and people becoming entrepreneurs is high I mean people you know fail because when they get challenged they they stop when they get challenged they think I can't do that you know somebody says you can't do that you can't make money at that you know your relatives say your poor relatives or whatever or somebody that's not doing it says you can do that the key I'll tell you is surround yourself by like-minded individuals that have what you want. Tap into those people. Tap into coaches to help you get where you want to be. Okay? And, and, and that's important. And, and when you do that and you just have a watch me attitude, when somebody says you can't do that, you say watch me. Okay? You will succeed. You'll be that 3%. You'll be in that 3% that has success. You won't be in that 90% that fails. Okay, don't be in that 97% that fails, that just tries it, that dips her toe in the water. Go all in, go all in. It will reward you many times over. How can you ever figure out, because I can, the future value of money? 
How can you figure out the future value of somebody coming into your business and, and exploding a line? I mean, some of you listening might not understand, but we build you know lines in, in our business and, and teams, I should say, in our business, and somebody explodes that team, and you get that residual income that it starts to produce for decades, for decades. I mean, our company's set up to be a multi-generational company. They had that vision from the start because there's seven owners of our company that have been working together in this industry for over a combined 140 years. And our business is only five years old. So that'd be 35 years. They had 100 years of experience before they started the company. And four of them worked together for 10 years. So they know what they're doing to create a multi-generational company. Okay? That's what excites me is when you put things in place like that up front to be able to go on for year, decades and generations, how can you ever predict what re, what residual, the future value of money, okay? So the effort you put now, if they're, you know, if you pour them all in and you're not making any money, stay at it. No matter what business you're in, if you're in a home, if you're a home-based professional, stay at it. Because I tell you what, over time, you can make a lifelong residual income that you can will to your children and, uh, and and to me that excites me okay well I'm gonna close if you've got value out of this please share this with others you know I enjoy telling my story and helping people I, I do this full-time every day I love this business that we're involved in it gives me the freedom you know because I've been self-employed for 32 years I've never had a boss uh, you know, I do the things I want to do when I want to do them with our family and stuff like that. And I love life. I love helping people. So if you enjoyed this, share it with others. I appreciate it. Give me a thumbs up. Give me some comments down below. And I'll talk to you another on another Facebook Live. Okay? Thank you.